What's going on? How's everyone doing? Shout out to you. Everybody else who's cool. Shucky! I didn't say. Eat your popcorn. <laughs> and your Coca Cola and relax. <laughs> anyway, tell Colin. I'm ready. What's going on? This is Colin. How's everybody doing? I hope you guys are having a great day so far. I've got a spicy one. This is Judge Simmons out of Lansing, Michigan, I believe. I know it's Michigan. I believe it's Lansing. Anyways, Judge Simmons is an awesome judge. We cover her a lot on this channel. Yeah, she's got a defendant with attitude. Guy almost leaves in cuffs, threatened with contempt. There's a lot that happens during this. Let's get into it. Before I hit that play button, you know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe. Do your jump kick backflips. Let's go. Okay, on the record, in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Michael Barron, 23 01767, Council of Parents. Good morning, Your Honor. Angela Belver on behalf of the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Justin, Michael Barron. Your present. I think your screen is not on as Randy Borman, who is the victim of the underlying matter in this case. Okay, I'm I do Zoom. see it. Oh, I do see Randy Borman starting her video now. Let's see. Here. Okay, this was the matter that he pled guilty to the bond violations and the people were dismissed in the name. That's correct, Your Honor. And I did verify that uh, an annali has already actually been done. We did it on the day of the plea. Can make our yes. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, well, uh, I guess I want to start with um, why we are here today specifically, Your Honor. Um, this court, I think, has had the opportunity to review the procedural history of this case. The underlying charges started out as a felony. Um, uh, well, a felony case, this court heard preliminary examination, it got bound over by a probable cause standard. Uh, my client and I were ready to try the case when it was a felony, when there were felony charges. Uh, it was remanded to district court uh, as a misdemeanor case. We were ready to try the case when there were misdemeanor charges. And in the interim, my client violated bond, obviously, and he's admitted to that. But I, I give that history just to illustrate that I think the proper consideration for this court is not what the underlying charges were, but what the bond violation was. Bond violation, uh, 
My client, he violated this court's orders. That needs to be taken seriously. We're not disputing them. Um, that said, what he is found to have violated for is, uh, and I'm not justifying it, but just to put it in context, is a fairly run-of-the-mill disorderly conduct type case. Um, it's the sort of thing under MCL 769.5 if this court were sentencing as a substantive separate crime, there would be a presumption against probation and jail. Um, and this, the case is presently pending, uh, the, the underlying charges, sorry, the charges relating to the bond violation are pending in 55th District Court. Uh, my client's currently on bond for Judge Allen. Um, if, if there is a conviction in that case, whether by plea or jury verdict, uh, I can pretty much guarantee this court that Judge Allen is going to put my client on probation for that. I'm asking your honor um, it, not, not to justify a violating this court's order this court, but, and not to say that that's okay, but I'm asking ultimately for a fines and cost sentence for the probation violation. Uh, I do know that um, it's a bond violation. Thing. Um, I also want to address one other thing. Uh, I know probation has yet to receive my client's substance abuse assessment that he did at Cristo Ray. Um, he has provided me proof uh, that he paid at Cristo Ray. I can show the court if the court needs to see that. We just haven't, for whatever reason, haven't been able to get the assessment from them. Um, so we will provide that to the court we'll as soon as we can get it. But it's, it's not because my client didn't do it. It's just we haven't gotten it from the agency. Um, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, I know that there was the victim from the underlying matter here that she wished to make. I, I don't, I think she, I don't know that she wants to make a statement, Your Honor. I think she just wanted to be present. Okay. Ms. Borman, is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, I quickly, I suppose, I understand the bond violation wasn't specific to the situation that brought us here. I am concerned when it comes to the violation, the dismissal of court orders. Um, the substance abuse piece doesn't pertain to me more the what brought us here to begin with and the understanding that then we may have the freedom of the speech freedom. to say the things that we want to say that there are consequences to some of our speech and our actions and just having that addressed in conjunction with the legal side of like those consequences um and also i am working to get the ppo information and mm -hmm. um refiling and having him served which i have not been able to do as of yet so i just ask that the no contact order remain in place while i work with the uh court for the ppo All right, I'm gonna, I guess, let the cat out of the bag. I don't know what this guy is charged with. Um, that's not why I'm sharing this clip. Why I'm sharing this clip is once he starts talking, which is gonna be soon, uh, he's got a paid lawyer. He paid his lawyer, which he's gonna brag about how much he paid for the lawyer here in a second. The judge does throw that back in his face when he doesn't stop talking. And we're just getting the, we're just getting through the, the basic court stuff and then it, this is uh it's gonna it's gonna make a turn and you're gonna see it it's gonna happen relatively shortly oh. did your client want to make a statement at all i would like to make a rebuttal i would like to make a statement no you're not going to address her you can address i, I can address you you're not going to address her or her request either i'm not going to we're going to address the uh bond violation which is what you're here for because the underlying matter you're not here for. 
that's been just that's been dismissed. I do have one question. It's been dismissed. Why is she here? I I have no idea, but she, but she appeared. Not, so I'm not she, I agree. I'm not I'm going not to. But uh, but you ask your attorney why she, why she's here, and your attorney can get that information from the prosecutor's office. I am not addressing that. I asked you, did you want to address why you're here to be sentenced before I impose a sentence? Okay. Um, on the bond violation, I'm sorry I didn't follow your orders. Um, definitely didn't realize it would get to be all this, I guess. What did so, you think was going to happen? Yeah, I guess I didn't think, to be honest with you. Um, especially when the charges got dismissed, I, I just find this whole this whole situation has been has been just a, a roller coaster ride from the beginning. Uh, I don't I don't know if you've read it all. Um, this started by somebody not knowing the law that worked for the government came to my house. I I regressed it online and maybe it was lawful or not, but it, it must have been because it's been dismissed. So for over a year, I've been on bond with this court. A government official came to my house, knocked on my door and didn't even know the law. The woman that I'm not trying to address her, but she came from CPS to my house, said it was illegal for my son to have a marijuana card. I told her, ma'am, it is not illegal. You should probably leave my house and go look up the law. If there's still a problem, get back a hold of me. She never did. She kept going. I posted her picture online. That was my only recourse. I called CPS. They told me if I come on their property, they send me a letter, a, a no trespass, no like threat. So from, from the beginning of this, she came to my house unlawful. She's made it on court record. She said she didn't know that was the law. My lawyer didn't know that was the law. I think even... One of the judges in this didn't know that was the law. I knew that was the law. I was in the law, in, in following law, minding my own business in my house. And now, and since then, we've had this fall up. I've had two felonies, two misdemeanors. She's tried to file a restraining order on me. I've never even met the woman in person. She was on my camera in my house. I posted a, a picture of her online and said she was at my house unlawfully. She, she tried to file a restraining order. It was denied. She went to Meridian Township Police, tried to get them to file charges on her, denied. She went to Lansing Police Department, had them call and threaten me over this post, denied no charges. She then goes to her friend who she works with every day and files a, a charges on me. She works with this, this prosecutor, their CPS and this woman. If you look this prosecutor up, prosecutor she up. prosecutes cases against children. That's her specialty. But this is a friend thing. Everybody else has to press charges. Normally calls the Normally police. Call. police. I've never seen anybody circumvent two police departments and a restraining order and get a prosecutor to can convict me. I'm dead wrong for drinking against your but against your orders. I am dead wrong for that. But this whole fallout from someone that didn't know their job coming to my house has been a nightmare. I was charged with two felonies, two misdemeanors, and I, all I did is say she came to my house without knowing the law she did and then she is that all you said i'm nice if you go look that's what no. i said there was and i asked for information on her and i was hoping other people have had the same problem because that's the way of the world today if you have a problem you go to the internet and you air it there when i called down to cps to air there was a problem instead of them doing something about it they send me a threatening letter so everywhere i turned i've got a threatening letter or a charge out of this I'm dead wrong for drinking on your barn, but clearly I wasn't dead wrong. The only person dead wrong was her coming to my house in the beginning and not knowing her job. If she had known her job, none of this would be here. I spent $7,000 on an attorney. I've taken countless days off work. I've been to jail all for her not knowing her job and, and starting something. I posted online that I wasn't happy with what she did. She came to my house unlawfully and didn't know her job. So my understanding is the underlying issue was that she came to your house as a CPS worker. Unlawfully. She didn't oh, know her Lord, own I'm job. not going to deal. I don't know the details, but I just, this is part of her. She came in an execution of her duties as a CPS worker. She thought she was doing well, her I don't she want you to, I'm not asking law. you to opine because this is not a matter that went to trial, correct? Well, that's right, Your Honor. And, and um, I was trying to. Yeah, it's not gone to trial. It was dismissed. Because we, she admitted on your so, record so, she was wrong. Your Honor, we it was were dismissed per plea agreement. Let's no, be no, clear. No. That, sir, <laughs> sir that, my understanding is this was not litigated. Okay. Correct, counsel? Yeah, that's right, Your Honor. Thank you. It was matter. not dismissed on any merits. You weren't given, you know, exonerated in this matter. 
you just made a statement on the record that you just made a comment about one thing, but I have the screenshot of what you put on social right. media. You were soliciting dirt on her, right. correct? Right. Because you wanted to create a problem because you felt like she was creating a problem for you, correct? Well, I figure I could use another, that dirt tomorrow. If someone posts the same thing, and I I know someone post. knows her and has some dirt on her. I can use that dirt. That doesn't right. seem like what you said is when there's a problem. The, the way of the world is we go to social media and air our grievances. This is not you airing grievance. This is you posting her picture so that you can and asking people, particularly. I know someone knows her and has some dirt on her, right. so that you can get the dirt because you wanted to use it. That is not the same as you airing a grievance. That's not the same as you making a post saying this. Uh, this person, I believe this person unlawfully came to my house. That's not the same thing. What you were doing in this looks like you were looking to create a problem. That's what it looks like. I don't. I don't know what your intent was. This again was not a matter that was litigated. I just know what this. The plain language of your text messages indicate that you were looking to create a problem for her because you felt like she created a problem for you. We were the looking other, to litigate. Uh, the, other, the other concern, I, I, I didn't ask you, were you looking to litigate? I recognize that you hired an attorney. He made it clear on the record he was prepared to go to trial. It wasn't. For at this point, it's been dismissed per a plea agreement. And there's your attorney could advise you. Plea agreements happen for a number, number of reasons. Just because the prosecution took the position to dismiss this per plea agreement does not mean that they don't believe that the case has validity. It's not what that means. So you shouldn't assume that and then go proceed in the actions that you were proceeding, uh, proceeding on because of that. Because you could find yourself having an, another bad year if you do that. You understand right. that? Right. And that's not what you want. You want to get this behind you, hopefully learn something. I don't know what you and Mr. Cruz talk about in private. It's none of my business, but hopefully there was some counsel in there that advised you that even though you came out on top when it comes to the plea agreement here, you don't want to engage in this kind of behavior. Even if you never get a conviction, look at the year that you had because of it. Told, I, I, yeah, I, like, you, you don't want that. It's, it's, it's not meaningful for you. Right. It's not meaningful for your child. It's definitely not meaningful for your bank account. It's not been meaningful in anything. Yeah. Nothing positive has come out. Absolutely. That's not the way of the world. We don't, as adults, and professionals address our grievances on social media. That's right. what kids do. Right. You're a grown man. I feel like with that said, when I called down and told them that I'm she, not, she I'm not asking you all that. I'm right. not, I, I'm not, I, I'm talking about you saying that the right. way of the world is we, we, that's not the way of the world. It's not appropriate. Okay. And, and, and this again was not an issue where you were just addressing a grievance from what I'm reading. It was looking like a solicitation for some dirt. Nonetheless, I recognize you had a bad year, and I, I appreciate you taking responsibility for uh, your actions in the regard of you violating the court's order. You were arraigned in this matter back on June 16, 2023, by the magistrate, no more, and you had certain conditions. And not only did you pick up a new charge, which was disorderly a conduct or disturbing the peace, but you were impaired, visibly impaired is what the report says, which was in violation of your bond condition not to use, purchase, or possess alcohol or drugs without a valid prescription. And I don't care if your case is pending for one year or three years. I don't care if you believe there's evidence to sustain your guilt or there, there is evidence. If that's the conditions that you're met with, then you have to follow those conditions unless your attorney comes to the court and makes a motion, Your Honor, can we have these conditions removed for X, Y, and Z purpose? That didn't happen here. So what we have here is something that demonstrates a blatant disregard for what the law is telling you to do. That doesn't fare well for you. Do you understand that? Oh, I understand. Uh, you have a pending matter. I have no interest or in intention to put uh, this man on probation for um, a violation of this bond condition, uh, which she has a pending matter on. Um, I'm even surprised he took a plea to it when he has a pending mat matter on it. But that's a whole other issue. Uh, you will be fit. You will be getting a fine, though. Do you understand that? Good luck to you and whatever you got going on over at uh, the 55th District Court. Your fine in this matter is $500. When will you be paying? I can pay it by.
All right. I let that play a long time. I wanted Judge Simmons to get her speech out. Get him, Judge Simmons. Yeah, this guy seems like a jerk. Anyone else agree with me? This guy just seems like a jerk. And I don't really have anything else to say. There's nothing to say here. The, uh, the guy, you know. He, all right. He went He went to the internet to air his grievances out because that's what everyone does. He's like, no, that's not what everyone does. That's what kids do. You're a grown-ass man, dude. All right, let's finish this one up. Next week, if you don't mind me, why today? How do you want it? When are you going to pay? I can pay by next week. But you guys charge these with credit cards, so I'm just... So I'll notice you'll be paid within seven days? Yep. Any additional matters for the record? I just want to place on the record, Your Honor, that just for the record, this case, the underlying matters was found over. It survived a motion to quash. The dismissals were not on the merits. I chose not to try this case in circuit court on Judge Dragonchuk's docket. And when the case was remanded here uh, and there was a bond violation, I chose to negotiate a plea on what I knew that Mr. Barron would plead to. Uh, and uh, it, rather than drag Ms. Borman through a jury trial in this courtroom. So the court was right when the court indicated that a plea bargain was negotiated, not as a result of any decision by the people on the merits. I would also indicate for the record that there was no denial of the Meridian Township Police Report. Meridian Township investigated it, referred it to the Lansing Police Department because Lansing had jurisdiction. Lansing didn't deny it. They submitted it for charges. It was reviewed by me because it landed in my queue and I reviewed it. Not because you're friends. Not because I'm friends. Mormon who probably just. All right. I, I, I got to make another comment here. The prosecutor put this all on the record. She didn't need to. It makes her look like she is friends with the the child worker. I, I don't remember her title. Off, uh, yeah, I, I would have to rewind to get her title. But I I don't know why she felt the need to say that. That does make her look like she's defending herself. She had no need to. She didn't need to. It was over. Just be careful. Be careful. Work for Ingham County as well. I, I, I do know Ms. Borman and I do work with her professionally, but sometimes I do review cases that don't have to do with child sexual abuse or child physical abuse because sometimes we're overwhelmed and my office assigns things to me that aren't related to that. I recognize it and I don't think it's fair for the defendant to make allegations uh, that they're friends and that this was moved forward uh, because of that. I don't I don't even know where you got that information from, but the yeah. The prosecutor works with the prosecutor's office works with people who work in all of the departments of Ingham County, whether it's child protective per, uh, services, whether it's the public defender's office. That doesn't mean that they're friends or that they're working in cahoots. That's something that your attorney should have dispelled uh, so that you would understand coming in here that just because they both work in Ingham County doesn't mean that they're friends. You understand that? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, any, I don't know anything about their personal relationship, but I'm just saying that we can't assume that just because they're right. they work for Ingham County, uh, that they're friends, and that this was prosecuted because she picked up the case because she's friends with the alleged victim in the underlying matter. That's not how cases are issued. Well, I'm hoping this whole and, thing of and, and Miss, and, and for the record, this prosecutor can't just decide I'm going to go. Uh, and then the prosecutor puts her bag on like she's just going to walk out. Mm, that looks even worse. I understand what the judge is saying. I understand how all this works, but it just it just doesn't look good, especially right after being accused of essentially colluding. Uh, just, again, got to be careful here. It's just going to take one person to view this tape the wrong way and see this the wrong way. Anyways, I'm going to let this video play out. You guys have a great rest of your day. If you haven't done it already, please hit that like button. Now this is when this guy is going to talk his mouth off and get threatened with contempt. Let's go. We'll take a case. I don't know if you knew that. Okay. I've seen prosecutors with no evidence at all. I, don't, I, I reckon. I reckon. Zero. I recognize that you have a lengthy criminal history, so I'm sure you've seen a lot. Right, but, uh, I've but I'm, I'm explaining to you how it works in Ingham County. Okay. Right. right. All I, right. I've been doing County. Okay, I'm sure. Uh, you pay your fines within 500 uh, within uh, 500 dollars within the next seven days. We could solve all this. If, if they would uh, stop no, no. I, I, 
Excuse me? If she would have never Do you want a contempt while we're here? Because no. we can make it happen. Just, all, right. all right. And that one won't be with a fine. All right. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Learn to control your mouth when you're in court. You have an attorney to speak for you. Let him do it. You paid him $7,000. Let him do it. Okay? All right. Have a good day.